Hey friends, I'm Heidi with Heavenly Minded Home and today I wanna share with you guys a really simple adjustment we have made to our diets that has been helping us immensely. So stay tuned, we are gonna talk about the carnivore diet today. I had been sharing with you guys over in our current series, the Grow and Grace Spring Cleaning Challenge, where we've been looking at, you know, really from the inside out, just habits and things that we're doing and areas that we wanna work on as we're kind of spring cleaning ourselves and getting started, you know, here in this next season. And one of the things I shared with you guys over there is that the caterpillars are walking. That's awesome. Our caterpillar, they are, they are walking together. Look at their little friends. One's faster than the other. You could have caterpillar races. Caterpillars are falling from the trees right now. We have them everywhere. <laughs> so the kids are like catching them, racing them, hanging out with them. Plenty of caterpillars. But I shared with you guys over there that our family has been doing the carnivore diet for about the past month. And so I kind of wanted to wait to see um, what it was like, how it's worked out and all of that before I shared. But we have been enjoying this so much that I cannot wait to share with you guys what it is, what we're doing, and kind of the results that we've seen even here in this first month. So first and foremost, the carnivore diet is pretty much what it sounds like. It is where you eat animals and animal products only. That's it. No fruits, no vegetables, no grains, nothing else but that. My husband brought this up to me um, a few months ago, and honestly, I thought he was insane. I thought that was the craziest, dumbest thing I'd ever heard of in my entire life, and he had clearly lost his marbles. No way, no how. That was never gonna be something that we did. That was my initial response. And then about another month or so went by, and I really was just becoming more and more frustrated because I eat really healthy. I do all of, you know, I, I try to do so many things and keep such a great balance. I have all the, you know, plant-based products and I'm doing this and I'm doing that and the supplements and, and all of the things. And yet I'm continuing to gain weight. I just cannot seem to get it to go down for the life of me. I've got this extra weight hanging around that's just making me really uncomfortable. My hormones are completely imbalanced and I have been suffering from for about the past 20 years, a bunch of hormone imbalance issues, but it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse, and nothing is seeming to make it better. My PCOS has gotten so bad, I am so bloated and in so much pain so often, and it's like no matter what I do and all of these other healthy things that I'm doing, it just, nothing is working, and I'm getting really, really frustrated, <laughs> um, is it really what it boils down to. And so I said, okay, I'm going to revisit this topic. My husband had talked about, you know, there was this doctor on Joe Rogan's podcast and a couple other things he had talked about. And um, not that I am recommending Joe Rogan to you. You know what you're going to get if you're listening to Joe Rogan and it's not going to be Bible focused. But he talked about this doctor that was on there. I'm like, okay, I want to hear it from a doctor. I want to hear this from someone. So I pulled it up and I said, okay, let me, let me hear him out, right? What, what does he have to say? What is this whole thing about? And so I'm hearing some of these conversations and I'm going, wow, these are the results you're seeing from this? Well, okay, I mean, I guess that makes sense. I had never thought about, you know, what does it take the body to break down plant and, and plant materials? What is all of this doing? Clearly there's something here that doesn't make sense. 
And so as you're hearing them break down all of these different things, I'm, I'm finding it very interesting, right? And then I find um, Dr. Ken Berry and I start watching some of his stuff and seeing these different things. I went ahead and joined some groups to see, you know, are people really having these types of results? You're talking, you know, diabetics who are no longer struggling. You're talking, you know, they're finally getting the insulin hormone balanced out. You're seeing people not only losing weight, but getting healthier. This is getting cured. This is getting cured. This is doing better because we know that what we put into our body Body is going to directly affect what comes out of it um, you know I think some of us the first things we go well what about you know heart disease and cholesterol so I'm hearing these doctors talk about it and you're like oh that, they're not even connected like the, these things don't even make sense right these things that we have always kind of been told they're not making sense you know you're looking at this and going what did you know the indigenous people and our ancestors for thousands of years what were the things that they consumed because they consume much different foods and they're not having the problems that we have today in our world we can look at indigenous peoples who are sticking to their you know ancient diets that don't have the issues that most modern people do is what it all boils down to and so i'm finding it so interesting you know listening to these guys and these different things and i go okay let's give it a shot let's give it a shot and see what happens because there are issues that I know I would like to have resolved hormone balancing number one um, there are things my husband would like to see you know his body and, and things health wise that he needs to look at and then there's things that we're seeing in our children that we go you know what you could you could gain from this um, the issues that I have my girls are most likely going to have and and different things that they have we know for with ADHD that um, carbs and sugar have a big impact on that and so we're looking at different ways that we're going hey you know this might not be a bad thing for all of us to do together as a family and so our goal going into it was that we would stick to a carnivore diet Monday through Saturday and Sunday would be our open day um, Sunday my husband you know Know, teaches at church and you know gives his sermon to our church on Sunday and then after that that's like kind of we just have rest time afterwards and so we always get pizza on Sunday right that's what we do we usually watch Pastor JD's prophecy update and eat pizza that's kind of been our thing and so I said okay I'm not gonna touch that don't worry that'll be our one day where we have something like that and so we dove into that on our very first week and what I really found interesting is not only how much better we started feeling, um, you're not counting calories or anything like that, so you eat as much as you need to to be good and full. So that's our goal, right? That's our goal. We're going to eat this carnivore diet Monday through Saturday. Sunday, you know, we're not gonna worry about it so much. Um, I'm obviously being much more strict on myself than I am with the kids, um, but still, I went through our fridge and our pantry and I got rid of everything that was not animal or animal based product. I got rid of everything. Um, luckily it was at the end of the month we were needing to do some grocery shopping anyway so there wasn't too terribly much in there to go through but it was nice to clean it all out. You know extra bags of chips, extra things you know they're kind of laying around that we really don't need to have anyways. It was nice to just clear all of that out. Um, I did have some canned goods I went ahead and kept up in there because I'm going to be the only one who would open that stuff up anyways but otherwise we cleared everything out and I put in our first grocery shopping order of just picking out animal based based products. And so for us, um, some people clear out all dairy altogether. We decided to keep a small amount of dairy. So the kids do usually have a cup or so of milk each day. Um, so we did continue, you know, with our organic milk. We did have a little bit of cheese, a little bit of sour cream, and I did get some cream cheese. And I will tell you that has kind of been our, our secret, <laughs> our secret ingredient here in everything. But we went ahead and did that, um, got our stuff. When I sat down to figure out our menu plan, I essentially said, you know, breakfast we will do bacon and eggs, or sometimes we'll go ahead, like every couple days, we'll go ahead and do like little smokies or something like that. Um, your biggest thing in finding stuff is you wanna find stuff that doesn't have sugar added to it. So that is the biggest thing. Um, bacon and eggs for breakfast, we are not new to intermittent fasting. That's something that we usually do anyways and have found just great results from. There with the intermittent fasting, we decided, you know, kind of give us our, um, give ourselves like a, about a six hour eating window each day. So we have breakfast, you know, kind of around 10 or so later in the morning. I went ahead and I've just been purchasing 
large packs of hamburger patties and putting some bacon grease and seasoning on those, cooking those in the air fryer and leaving them in the fridge in a container. So if in that like afternoon area we need a little something, right, you're just feeling a little hungry, we've got something like that that we can easily pull out. Also um, sugar-free hot dogs and things like that. Again, if you just want a little something that it's not quite time to eat yet, but you need a little something, um, we've had that in there to make. And then for our main meal, so we have breakfast, kind of a snack, and then a main meal in our day. We've basically just taken all of the foods that I know our family already likes, but we're only eating the meat portion of it. So we're doing steak every week. I get cheaper cuts of steak, right? I don't have a large food budget and there's six people in my family, including a nearly 18 year old boy. So I need to make sure that we can keep everybody good and fed, especially when we're only eating meat. So we get um, cheaper steaks. We will do ground beef with like taco seasoning in it and we'll top it with cilantro, a tiny bit of cheese, a tiny bit of sour cream, maybe a spoonful of a salsa. Again, trying to limit all that stuff out. It's kind of like that idea of the whole 30, you want to limit everything out we want to try to just have the meat and animal products eggs um, some dairy things like that and so we do you know we've done taco meat we've done chicken cooked various different ways thighs drumsticks tenderloins doesn't matter right different types of chicken um, we've done pork tenderloin um, any of the the meats we normally like we get that but again you're only preparing the meat portion. Add eggs to everything. Hard boiled eggs for snacks. Um, many different ways that you can get eggs in. I am not actually a big egg person. So like for me, my scrambled eggs every morning, I got sugar free ketchup. I put a smidge of that on it because I don't really like eggs. I've never been an egg person. Funny thing I've noticed though is a few weeks now going through this, I'm noticing my taste buds changing. Like I wake up in the morning craving some eggs. Um, I'm noticing these different things. We make sure that we get pasture raised eggs when we have to supplement because we're down to only having two chickens. So we have to bring in some eggs and we're getting good, full, very nutritious, um, nutritionally dense eggs. Um, so kind of having that for our breakfast each day. On Saturday, we do a little treat and we do um, this very delicious sugar-free Icelandic yogurt with a small sprinkle of berries. Um, berries affect your system differently than other fruits and vegetables. So we do a small amount of berries on Saturday. Saturday mornings there with our Icelandic yogurt. Um, otherwise, it is bacon and eggs. Like I said, still that little kind of midday snack. We have lunch meats, um, we have hot dogs, and then we have those hamburger patties that I make up that we kind of eat if you need a little something in the middle of the day. A lot of the times we're feeling a lot fuller, so I'm not as hungry. I don't need anything. And then for dinner, then having steak, chicken, pork tenderloin, um, you can do lamb chops, you know, anything like that. Um, that's what we have for our main meal. Now, a secret ingredient that we pulled out is I found a carnivore friendly, it's like a cheesecake filling that you can make. Um, it's no bake, you keep it in the fridge, that and making sugar-free homemade heavy whipping cream, like whipped cream to put on top of it, lifesaver. So we've noticed after we eat, even the kids, you just want that little bit of something for your sweet tooth. I have this cheesecake filling. It's just cream cheese, sour cream, heavy whipping cream. Um, I put a splash of lemon juice, a splash of vanilla in there, and then I put a little sprinkle of monk fruit sweetener. So we just put a little bit together, whip it all up, and then keep it in the fridge. And then like I said, when we're ready, we each get like a, a heaping tablespoon of that with a scoop of unsweetened um, whipped cream on top of that and it is delicious. It's like that perfect thing that it's full of fat, so it's good in your body. It gives you that very um, satisfied feeling, but yet um, you got a little bit of sweetness in there, so that way it helps kind of give you that um, satisfied sweet tooth filling. So that has been something we've absolutely enjoyed um, having as, as a little snack. So doing this, this is essentially what we've been doing every week, okay? I will say, that we have had a handful of days in the past month where 
We had um, one kid's birthday. We had a week where we had a company over literally nearly every single day of the week. So we had a couple days where I'm not going to be a crazy psychopath over a diet. Um, so when things came up, yes, we still got our daughter a birthday cake. Um, we went out to where she wanted to go out to eat for that day. Um, when company was over, we you know, had things. Uh, my brother-in-law was over, wanted to treat the kids to pizza. So we had pizza in the middle of the week, right? We had a few things like that. And what I noticed was, number one, I immediately felt the difference after eating stuff with the other things in it. Once I'm eating carbs, there's sugar. Um, even I started noticing the first time I tried to have my super healthy veggie smoothie I tried to make myself, I was so bloated and in so much pain. It was horrible, horrible. And again, this is the really, really healthy plant-based, all of the things. It affected me and it was painful after I drank it. Um, I noticed that with our daughter's birthday, the kids enjoyed the cake, but yet all of them scraped off nearly all frosting and none of the kids actually asked for seconds. Nobody went back for more. So even though the kids, I don't think, want to admit that they're feeling much better, I have noticed huge differences in them that they're not wanting to go back for seconds. I noticed that the day after we've had the stuff, mm, nobody's feeling too good. My stomach hurts. I just don't feel great. Kids are sleeping in. They're a little more sluggish in the morning. Um, we're noticing huge differences when it comes to that. Now, in the first week of doing this, I dropped seven pounds like that. And then every day since then, if we have a day where we get off and I eat other things, some of that water weight starts being held back in, right? I see the scale go up. Every day that I stay strictly carnivore and I don't bring anything else in, I'm watching the scale tick down every single day. Now I'm not doing anything special. I'm not working out. I'm not, you know, doing anything of the like. We just started in our Grow and Grace series where I'm trying to get back into, you know, walking a little more. We hike once a week, but that's it. I'm not doing anything special. And every day the scale is ticking down, which means I'm noticing that things fit better. I feel better. With my PCOS, I have had zero days of bloat and pain when I am sticking here to the diet. The only days that I've had some, oh, it's like when I told you I drink my veggie smoothie and a couple days when I went ahead and I had a piece of pizza or did something, I noticed, oh, I just didn't feel good that night. Other than that though, I have had zero bloating, zero pain, which is insane because I have not had any time in the past 10 years solid that I wasn't dealing with bloat and pain. I am noticing some hormone balancing is starting to come in. I'm not expecting it all to be fixed in a month's time, but I'm noticing it come back in. I, for one, for the first time in my 35 years of life, my first time ever, I had a normal, normal monthly cycle. Never has happened for me before. It started when it was supposed to, it ended when it was supposed to, and it did all the things that normal people get to have that my body has never experienced. I am feeling better. Joints that usually hurt and bother me aren't hurting and bothering me. I feel like I have more energy. I'm up in the morning and I'm feeling ready to go. I'm sleeping better at night. I'm just finding many different things that are feeling so much better. I'm noticing things in the kids, noticing things in my husband. It's really been fantastic to see all across the board. And so, yeah, we started this carnivore diet. The point of it is to be an elimination diet, right? Kind of like the, the Whole30 program that they did. But for me, it was always a lot of stuff and it was really confusing. I want something simple, minimal, easy, straightforward. It's really easy to say, only consume animals and animal products. That's it, nothing else, right? That's pretty clear and simple. And maybe do this for 30, 60, 90 days, right? See where your body is once you start allowing yourself to flush out all of that excess and inflammation and hormone imbalance and allow things to start resetting themselves. Once you get to a point where you're feeling pretty good, right? You're really starting to see people with autoimmune diseases are finding them completely gone, right? You're seeing all of these different things, anxiety and depression. They're seeing a lot of impact in those areas, especially diabetes or pre-diabetes. Um, they're seeing so much in that. And so allowing your body that time to flush all of that out, get to a place where you're feeling good. And then you can stop and say, okay, now I'll start bringing some things in 
one by one slowly so I can see how my body reacts to it. A lot of people cannot process plant product, but we don't know that because we've never flushed it all out and gone through this system, right? We always are told, eat this and eat that. You don't know that your body has a hard time with it. Maybe your body does have a hard time processing wheat. Maybe your body does have a hard time processing leafy greens. That is something that does happen to many people. And so once you've allowed your body that time to flush it all out, work through your issues, you know, rebalance your hormones, you're getting all of these things taken care of, you're getting the benefits of, you know, some weight loss and things on top of it. So you're not having that extra stress on different joints and areas of your body. And then you can slowly bring these things in and see, okay, I did good with this. I ate this and guess what did not feel good. I don't want to eat that anymore. Eat it very sparingly, right? You're going to see those different changes come in once you have processed all of that out, allowed your body some time to heal. Maybe you want to stay eating this way indefinitely. You can do that, right? That's up to you. But I think that process of being able to process this out, you know, we're hoping somewhere, you know, between the next, you know, 100 days or so, you know, that we'll kind of see where our bodies are feeling from this and then we can kind of start that process of bringing stuff in slowly one at a time and seeing how our bodies respond but if this is any indication again we're coming up on the one month mark feeling great dropping weight I'm feeling um, just more energy things aren't hurting I'm not dealing with the bloating and the pain like I usually do I'm seeing hormonal balance come back in I feel like my skin is doing better. You know, all of these different things, you just start seeing these improvements and then it's such an encouragement to be like, yes, I will easily do this. Let me say that menu planning is a piece of cake because these are our only things to choose from, right? Animal, animal products, that's it. Grocery shopping is a breeze because I am only going to two areas in the grocery store, right? Meat and then the dairy aisle for a few select things. That's all we're getting. When it comes to drinks, we are only consuming water or unsweetened herbal teas. Um, I do coffee and I just put a little bit of a creamer in it that is just pure cream with a tiny amount of monk fruit sweetener. Um, so you can have black coffee, you just don't wanna be adding any of the junk to it. Um, I do unsweetened herbal teas often. I drink sparkling water like crazy. Those are the only things that me, my husband, the kids, that's the only things that we are consuming. I am also finding that while meat in and of itself costs more than other things, because I am only purchasing these things, we have a strict menu plan of what we're eating. I buy these things once a week, so we have all the meat in our fridge. We cook it up as we need to go. I'm not buying all of the extra things, and we're not eating out also because we're doing these things we are spending less per week on our food than we normally do so that's another thing if you stop and you look at it and you think about it sure you could do this and it could be far more costly if you're eating a ribeye every night and you're getting ribbed and doing all this like yes it could cost more for us it has been costing less we are spending less money by doing this our kids are full they're not feeling the need to snack all day long because when we sit down to eat we sit down and we eat until we are all comfortably full. We are staying well hydrated and we're feeling better. So I'm sure I'll have way more videos to do on this to update you guys as we go. If you have questions, ask them. I would love to hear. I'm not saying we're the experts. I'm not saying this is the end all be all. I'm saying that this is a simple thing. It's using the resources that God has given us, that he designed and gave to us, right? We're using that and we're allowing our bodies a system to heal from the damage that we've done to them just through life and through our modern, you know, ideas that we have of great ways to fuel ourselves. And so taking this and saying, hey, there are thousands upon thousands of people who are having drastic results with this. I understand that a lot of doctors haven't studied this and so they're not knowledgeable in this. I understand that. But there's also doctors who have. And you can go and you can look at them and even with different things that you might have, right? My husband had his gallbladder removed so I was concerned about that. What did the doctors say about that? Okay, cool. What about diabetes? What about cholesterol? What about heart issues, right? You look at all these things and you go to doctors that are knowledgeable and you learn and you go, okay, I've never heard this before. This is new to me. It's not the norm that's pushed out. 
but also the norm doesn't seem to be working for most people. So we need something else here. And taking this and applying this, we're seeing amazing results. From me and my husband down through our kids, all of us are feeling better, we're full, you know, all of these different things are going on and it has just been really, really awesome to see that because again, when we properly fuel ourselves and we feel better, that allows us to go and we're being better stewards, right? I'm keeping up with my kids. I have more energy. We're doing the things because I'm not just exhausted all the time. I'm not struggling to keep up. I'm not, you know, getting so overwhelmed in this. I start making little changes and it has a huge impact in our life. So this is the beginning. Leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. I would love to answer anything. Um, I know I'm probably already thinking that we'll probably need to do some like recipe videos and what we're eating and grocery shopping and how much it's costing and all of that good stuff. So leave your comments. Let me know what you would like to hear. I hope this does help though for anybody else who's been thinking, gosh, oh my goodness, nothing is working. What the heck am I going to do? I'm sick of feeling like junk and I just want to do something easy, right? I just want to get feeling better. And so that's what we're doing here. Of course, come over and join us in the collective. We're doing our Grow in Grace series right now where we are tackling all of these topics from a biblical perspective, spring cleaning ourselves inside and out. So click that blue join button. You guys can come over and join us there. Plus you get podcasts and other courses and all kinds of cool stuff. So praying this helps and can serve you today. Looking forward to seeing y'all's comments and uh, we'll be back soon. Bye guys.